Hi, welcome to my classroom. Today, I'm going to show you how to sew a little fawn. For your supplies today, you will need a needle and embroidery floss, the felt from your project, and scissors. Scissors and not pictured, you will need polyfill or stuffing. I already began to sew on the face and the spots and you can really do whatever you want with these. So I'm going to position mine right there and I'm going to thread my needle with a knot on the end and I'm gonna start from the back. So I'm poking up from the back to the front, making sure that my finger is out of the way. And as I pull, I'm gonna hold between the eye of the needle and the thread so I don't unthread my needle and pull so my knot is up against my fabric. Then I'm gonna poke down again close to where the thread came up and take a small stitch. So really we're just anchoring these in place. It's not to look pretty, it's just to keep our decorations on our felt in place. And then I'm gonna take a second stitch towards the top. So doing the same thing, poking up from the back, pulling tight, and then going down towards the side. After that, I'm gonna tie a knot, so I'm gonna make a loop and put my needle through the loop and pull. So that's gonna create a knot right there. Hold my finger down so that way the knot goes where I want it. And then you can tie a second knot like I am. I just like to make sure that it's a little extra secure. Then get your scissors and cut close to the knot. Just don't cut your knot off. And that's it, that's how you sew on the piece. So you will need the front of your fawn and the back of your fawn. We're gonna start stitching them together. So you wanna line them up as best you can. And if you cut them out at the same time, it should be pretty easy. This first stitch I'm gonna show you is the whip stitch. So I'm gonna take my needle and go from the back of the top piece. So the piece that has all my felt on it and pull. So that way my knot is hidden in between, sandwiched in between the two. And then I am going to poke from the back to the front. So this is going to whip around the side of the felt and create a whip stitch. The thing with this is to make sure that they are evenly spaced and that when you take another stitch, your needle should be poking out close to where the thread is coming out. So that way it looks nice and neat. Um, if you're not doing that, it tends to look a little messy and we don't want that. You know, you want your stuff to look great. Okay, so this is our whip stitch and you would just go all the way around the perimeter of your project. Your second option is to do a blanket stitch. So it starts the same way as the whip stitch. You're gonna poke from the back to the front to hide that knot inside and then if you have a little bit of a tail like i do there you're gonna tuck it inside so with the blanket stitch it takes a little bit more getting used to the motion but once you get it down it's really good so you poke from the front through both pieces of felt and then wrap that thread under your needle i'm going to show you again poking down from the front to the back through both pieces of felt and then make sure that the embroidery floss, the thread is underneath your needle and then pull the needle through. Every time that you're taking a stitch, just like with the whip stitch, make sure that you are poking down so that all of your stitches line up. It's the same amount to the inside of your fabric because that's gonna make it look really nice. And as you continue this blanket stitch, you'll see that there is a border being created along the outside. And that's why I think it looks a little bit nicer. It's a little bit fancier. I prefer it. Whip stitch can look very nice too, but it's also very easy to make it look messy. As I continue to go around the perimeter, I make sure that I line the stitches up so it looks a little bit neater. It looks like I paid more attention to detail, which I did. And it just looks, I think, really awesome. So you will continue to sew all the way along the perimeter. 
When you start to run out of thread, you will poke to the center and then you're just gonna tie a knot to make a loop and pull the thread through and then cut it off. And then you'll get a new piece of thread and then just continue all the way around. So we are going to leave a hole towards the top so that way we can stuff it. You definitely wanna use your finger and push the stuffing around. You can also use a blunt object. So if you have a pen with a pen cap or I grabbed my Apple pencil to kind of try and stuff it down into the legs. And then I'm going to finish sewing it closed. So when I did that, I just took my needle off the thread. And then once I finished stuffing it, then I put my needle back on the thread. So I didn't knot that there because I had plenty of thread to, to keep going. So I'm gonna continue taking stitches and whether you're doing a whip stitch or a blanket stitch, it's gonna be the same idea. Then when you get to the end, we're going to take a stitch and then loop our needle through the stitch. So it kind of makes like a knot. And I did a couple of them just cause I don't want my little guy to fall apart after all that work. So I just feed my needle through the loop that I made, pulling it tight. Then I get my scissors and cut and you have finished sewing your loop. I hope you had as much fun sewing that as I had making this video for y'all. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment, and I look forward to sharing more things with y'all. Have a great day.